Welcome to the Amadeus Software's Tips and Techniques podcast series. My name is Andrew Beggs and I work with Amadeus Software Limited, experts in SaaS and providers of business intelligence solutions, technical support, instructor-led and online training. Please feel free to visit our website to find out more information on this podcast series and other services that we can provide. In the following presentation, we're going to find out how we can use Proc SCA Proc to generate an additional type of SAS log file that can be used to analyze the inputs and outputs of SAS programs. We'll start with an introduction, then look at the syntax of the procedure, show how it's invoked, and demonstrate its use through examples before rounding off with a summary. Proc SCA Proc was first made available with SAS 913 and can therefore be used with this and any subsequent version. It's part of the SAS code analyzer which is included with the base SAS product. The procedure works by creating an additional log file that reports on the inputs and outputs from each step in a SAS program. Note that the SCA Proc log is not intended to replace the standard log it merely aims to provide more detail on inputs and outputs. The range of inputs and outputs reported on is much wider than is found in the standard log. There is therefore the potential to use the additional log information to track the dependencies between SAS programs. The syntax of the procedure is as shown. Effectively it involves sandwiching program code between two calls to PROC SCA PROC. The first call flags when to start recording and where to write the SCA log to, whilst the second one flags when to stop recording and write out the log. In terms of the parameters and options, the external file row specifies the name of the SCA proc log file to be created. This can either be a physical name or a logical one. The ATTR option is used to request that additional attribute information is output for SAS datasets whilst the open times option requests that access times and sizes of data sets are output. Options relating to the grid job generator are not covered in this podcast. The key statements are record and write. PROC SCA PROC statements can be included anywhere within the SAS program, but remember that nothing is written to the SCA PROC log until a write statement has been executed. A better approach is to submit the SCA PROC statements from init STMT and term STMT options on the command used to invoke SAS. The advantage of this approach is that it's easier to maintain with inputs and outputs being captured for the entire SAS session. The syntax for applying PROC SCA PROC statements via init STMT and term STMT options is as shown. Note that statements submitted using the init stmt option are executed after any that appear in an autoexec file and before any that occur in a batch file. Statements submitted by the term stmt option are executed when the SAS session ends. The recommended way of using the procedure involves the following steps. Firstly, invoke a SAS session with PROC SCA PROC turned on. Then run one or more SAS programs close the SAS session, and finally inspect the SCA PROC log file. We'll now demonstrate the use of the procedure by running two example programs. In the first example, SAS has already been invoked with PROC SCA PROC set to record. No additional SCA PROC options have been specified, so the default is used in terms of what is recorded. Note that the log window confirms that the initial PROC SCA PROC step has been run. Within the program itself, the path to the data storage area is assigned to a macro variable, which is subsequently used to assign a libref. The format search option is also set to the same location. Within the three program steps, note the external file being read into the first data step the external file being output from the second data step and the data sets being read and written out from PROCGLM. We'll now submit the code, close SAS and examine the SCA PROC log. For clarity, 
The SCA PROC log has been opened in the SAS program editor window with line numbers turned on. For each program step there is a block of job split comments that list information about the various inputs and outputs, followed by a list of the program statements that were submitted. Looking at individual lines within the log we can see that it lists the name of the SAS program that was executed, the name of the output data set from the initial data step, the lib name assigned, the name of the input text file for the initial data step, the name of a macro variable that has been created, the name of a macro variable that has been accessed, the amount of elapsed time, the name of the procedure or data step, the name of the input data set for the second data step, the name of a format used, the name of the output text file as derived by the path name function, the name of the input data set used by PROC GLM, the name of the output data set from PROC GLM, and the name of the output SCA PROC log file. With the second example, SAS has been invoked with PROC SCA PROC set to record, but this time the ATTR and open times options have been specified. The percent include statement includes a macro definition into the program. The macro has parameters for the dataset name, variables to plot, and an output file name. PROC SGPLOT is used to create a bar chart of the specified category and response variables, outputting the result to an ODS PDF destination. Two calls are then made to the plot VARS macro in order to create some simple graphs. We'll now submit the code, close SAS and examine the SCA PROC log. Looking at the resulting SCA PROG log file, the following lines are of note. The name of the included file containing the macro definition. The name of the catalogue to which the compiled macro is written. The name of a SAS item store. The name of the input data set derived by the macro. the time at which the data set was accessed together with its size note that this is output because the open times option has been specified the name of the output PDF file generated by the macro the attributes of the variable called country in the music data set note that this is output because the ATTR option has been specified In summary, PROC SCA PROC is an effective means of tracking the inputs and outputs of SAS programs. The SCA PROC log does not replace the standard log but complements it. For additional detail on access times and variable attributes, consider using the open times and ATTR options. If required, SCA PROC logs can be read into a SAS dataset so that different components are split out into separate variables. This can be done using traditional programming methods. Well that concludes the presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Amadeus Software podcast. We hope that you found it useful. Please make sure that you check out the rest of this podcast series via our website, through iTunes or on YouTube. We also welcome comments or suggestions for future tips. Please contact us either via email at info at amadeus.co.uk or through our website at www.amadeus.co.uk